Welcome everybody to episode number 45 of the Third Sun Gaming Podcast. I'm your host Tyler, joined as always by our three co-hosts, starting with Mike. Mike, how are you doing today? Delicious, Tyler. Simply delicious. Wonderful. How are you? I'm great. Uh, I'm on vacation. What is right that? Now, so that's pretty what awesome. That? Um, <laughs> I'm on vacation though, so I'm doing great. Um, I bet start, you are. Let's go next to Graham. Graham, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Like, life is great. We got I got some playoff hockey that I can watch. Um, yeah, right. other than that, things have been good for me. Good, good. And Eugene, how you doing? I'm doing good. A little bit tired. Uh, worked a lot of hours this week. Uh, tired of seeing this all this hockey news on my Facebook feed. Don't care about <laughs> hockey. <laughs> it shows when you play NHL. Hockey feed doesn't care. Oh, give me a break. Okay, I do care a little <laughs> bit about NHL 17 because I've actually played a lot of it this week. So. Good. Oh really? Good. Cool. Yeah. Uh-huh. Did you figure so, out off nights and how to pass forward and back? Okay, li- listen. I, I, had some <laughs> lag, I had some network lag ways. issues, and uh, I, I noticed a lot of people that I was playing with online too saying that there was uh, some network issues all day. So I don't think that was me. So don't blame that on me. I actually got an, an achievement for scoring a, a special kind of goal. So nice. What, what kind of goal? You special? Uh, it is like a very common achievement for like knocking <laughs> the ball off the goal. But no, nice. Good job, man. Yeah, that's really playing, good. I was playing online, so we still Wait, lost the game, but um, yeah, the it was a water real- bottle achievement, Mike. Oh yeah, that's that's random. It took me like a uh, good two hundred. Yeah, games. I got it like on my first goal online. Yeah, nice. just get you, so. just get your get your uh, um, helmet knocked off your melon now, then score, and you that's get that. That's a tough one. That's a tough yeah. one. I, I'm not going for so. it. <laughs> All right, it's, so. If uh, if you want to join in on the conversation, you are more than welcome to uh, go to our Facebook page, and go over to Facebook, and uh, go to the Third Sun Gaming Podcast forums and uh, request to join. It's a private group, so nobody will see what you post. But uh, uh, go there, go over there, and request to join that to be part of our conversation. So, with that, let's get into news this week. Let's start off with this little-known game called Star Wars Battlefront Two. Mm, it has yes. a release date of November 17th. It does. Which is very similar to the last one. Yep. And most exciting, <laughs> excuse me, is that there's wow. no season pass really? in this game. No yeah. season pass. Woo! So they haven't nice. quite announced how they're going to do it yet, but I think they're going to probably follow the Halo 5 model, which is uh, great news. And yep. I, you know, I loved what they did there. They would release a couple maps you know, every couple months or so. And keep bringing uh-huh. updates to the game that uh, that kept it fresh. So that was always really fun. It, it brought a lot of life to the game. Right. So hopefully I was they actually do that here. Yeah, I was I just I, had a little thought here. Uh-oh. If these games start, yeah, just a little thought. If games start following these trend about not doing season passes and stuff like that, do you think they're gonna like raise their overall price of the game by like twenty bucks or something? No. And say, no. okay, you get all this no. stuff for free. No one no. will buy it. I don't think so. No. I think people have a meltdown if that happens. This is yeah. the trend, man. This is this is like yeah. the EA trend. If you, you you take something out and you put something back in, and what they're doing what? is they're they're starting to do this, so it gets the uh, attracts the gamers. So you're gonna see other companies now and then, you know, say we're gonna have free DLC with this game, and the gamers are gonna go, yay, we love you, and then you know it's gonna get back there, and all of a sudden we'll go back to DLC again. Well, I, I think what it is is they're they're putting a band aid on last year because there's yes. a huge uproar. Uh, with the the way they managed the season pass and DLC, uh, how long it took them um, to yes. release uh, and fix things online, uh, especially mm-hmm. for a multiplayer a multiplayer only game. So I really think this is them trying to get Wait their minute. fan base back. And uh, um, it, it's just like how Halo Five was a direct response to the mess that was Master Chief Collection, re, you know, right. launching online. So right. Wait a minute. Well, I got a question. Is it was was it Star Wars Battlefront or was it? Um, um, Batman, who put out, said, "Okay, well, you got to buy the DLC, but we don't know what you're going to get." That was, uh, that, was that was well, Arkham Knight. That was Arkham Knight. Yeah, well, Arkham Knight. Like, I, I still don't think they've even released all their DLC yet. Like for their season, so. it's like, yeah, they. I don't think they have, and that that was uproar about that. Like, they're like, here's a season pass, but they didn't detail anything about it. They didn't yeah. say what you're going to get in the future at all. But I, I, I still think there's about an equal amount. I, I remember the news around that point that there's about an equal amount of hate. Is um, especially for Arkham Knight, but then even even more so for uh, Battlefront. Uh, whenever they they handled their season pass, so they're they're putting a band aid on it. They're trying to fix it, fix a mistake from last year, and get a, a more dedicated fan base uh, this go around with the single yeah. player campaign. I, I think 
Yeah, go wasn't, ahead, Mike. Wasn't, wasn't Arkham Knight the Batmobile simulator? Yes. yes. Okay. All driving around and everything. And, still, it, and that was broken. I still like it. I, I love the second. Absolutely. Yeah, love the second oh, one was great. Arkham and City? I, yeah. yeah. So Arkham City was great, and I actually liked the third one too. But um, sticking with Battlefront, um, and by, well, one last point I was going to make on that is I think companies are finding too that they make a lot more money off these like cosmetic purchases than they thought they would. Right. Yeah. So going in to buy, you know, like the special outfits Dollar, and whatever. Dollar ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah, they make a lot more off that than I think they thought they were yep. going to. So, you know, maybe that'll pave the way for DLC to be free and a lot That'd, more. That would be big very nice. Games. So I think I think we yeah. deserve it for all the money people contribute to their games and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, don't be so greedy. Yeah. So multiplayer will feature mm-hmm. less casual mechanics, which is awesome news for people who Boys. like online shooters. Yes. Um, there's there are no more pickups for heroes, so you don't just go pick up the icon anymore. And there'll be uh-huh. a progression system. And and Mike, you brought up uh, earlier before the show, but I hope mm-hmm. it's a lot like Titanfall. Yeah, yeah, and, that's that's fair. You know, mm-hmm. you whoop yeah. a little ass, you get a, you get a little, you know, get a little taste. I mean, I don't yeah, see anything I, wrong with that. I don't want it to be linked to like an eight kill streak or something, because then right. only the best of the best get oh, to no. play the heroes. <laughs> I never get right. those streaks. Yeah. Right. So right, especially uh, when you get to seven, and then you know you get smashed by some, yes. some guy with a knife, and you just like drop the controller and call yep. it a day. Yep. Progression yeah, will have yeah. Progression will have different tracks for different classes, and be much deeper than it was in the first game, which is good. A lot of people will enjoy that. And uh, you'd think this is common sense, but in the second game, aiming down sights is going to give you more accuracy than hip firing. Oh no shit! Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> And That's blasters. actually something got to announce. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is because it wow. didn't in the first game. It was just as accurate off the hip. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. And blasters will be very difficult to master because they are super powerful. And like everybody it. carried around blasters and just, like, killed you left and right. You'd spawn and die. So, yep. yep. So, to be, basically, they're going to turn the blasters into battlefield guns because those are not easy yes. to master. You know? No, they're not. That's uh, good. I like that. Yeah, I like I do it. Too. I'm really looking forward to this. Especially... Uh, Especially the um, trailer for the single player. That looked great. Oh, it did. And the fact that it's Empire-centric is awesome. Uh, yeah. That, that was a really... I, I got really excited for that trailer. It is a very, very exciting trailer. Good-looking trailer. So I'm excited for this game. I didn't even play uh, other than the first week. I haven't even played Battlefront. It, it just it just wasn't a fun game to me. Yeah, I was saying that happened to me and Ty. But we kept revisiting it and revisiting it, and it's the same thing. It just kept going by the wayside. I tried so hard to love that game. Yeah, and the beta turned me off. To be honest, I didn't yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful game. It it's is a great, really looking good game. looking game. And just boring the, and repetitive. Yeah, the yep. sound in it is great too. Yep. And but everything beyond that is pretty mundane. So, right. All right. Uh, next up, Overwatch, if you're a fan of that game still, uh, lots of people are, is changing how ties are broken in their games. Basically now, if right now, if you are tied at the end of a game, the, the tiebreaker goes to the team that has the most uh, progression towards a capture point. So it created what's called the 1% rule, where a team would have 1% progression and win the game. So now that's being changed now to you have to have at least 33% progression towards a capture point to win in that tiebreaker. So Good. I think that's a lot more fair. And that'll stop uh, stat buffing, too. Yes. So, that's good. Uh, You know, we've talked lately a lot about a lot of really great sales on hard, you know, physical copy games. Uh And here might be the reason why. Digital game sales in the United States now account for 74% of all game purchases. Dang. Yeah. And that's a lot higher than even I'd think. You know why? I buy buy all my games digital, but go ahead, Mike. We're fat and lazy. (laughs) It's so convenient, though. Like, I find that's a big thing. So this statistic, is is it taking into account uh, mobile sales at all? That I don't know. I don't. Yeah, Yeah. I know. That just seems like such a high percentage because still, I would, I would still think on 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 consoles, actual consoles, and I would think too is Steam or Steam sales included in this uh, as well. Yeah. So so. I really do think if if you really took the Steam sales out of the equation, and if they do, which they probably don't put mobile phone games because there's no other options for mobile phone games, right. uh, but uh, Steam, if they include Steam in this, then most definitely uh, digital sales. But I think if they took that out of the equation, uh, physical still rules console. 
Yeah. Uh, more than Especially likely. with the Switch, I would say, just because the lack of memory and stuff. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. There's a lot of people that like to play the game, kind of complete it, and take it back to GameStop and trade it in for another one. But right. I'll tell you what, it, it's got to be a noticeable amount, you know? Uh, it, let's just say uh, for a safe side, let's take Steam out. You know, let's say it's up 33%. That I can believe, absolutely. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, GameStop just closed down how many stores? Uh, they just announced well, 100, only 100. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, I mean, I mean that yeah. that is probably uh, in direct reflection of uh, people moving more oh, to the sure. virtual world. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but for GameStop sure. does it wrong. You know, they they they've done some pretty shady stuff. Like, I don't know. Get you guys probably know this, but they came out with a GameStop credit card, and if oh, you God. got two, if you got two yeah. sticks and a nickel, you could qualify for it. Yes. And so you have every at, at thirty percent interest. Basement yes. well are going in there and getting a five hundred dollar limit and blowing it all, and then not paying the card. Yeah. You know. I have a GameStop so. credit card. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. My uh, exactly. it's not, it's, the thing it's, is, not, it's not it's not GameStop. It's Comenity Bank, one of the biggest banks okay. in the world. So can't well, like are, GameStop for everything. You know what I'm saying though? It's uh, it's it's to the it's to the audience that they're offering it to. It's like like I said, yeah. if you got you know two pretzel sticks and a nickel, you're qualified for this card. Yeah, that, and that, you're right. That's what it was at first. They, they basically handed them out, and okay. you know you got a lot of younger people that are like just starting in college or whatever. That don't have the money, but they want a PS4, they want an Xbox One, and they quit. And I'm like, oh, I can get this credit card and just take it home today. And they don't pay it off, and it ends up ruining their credit, which, you know, isn't necessarily GameStop's, GameStop's problem or responsibility. But no. at the same time, I think you have a responsibility. Um, hey, know, this to, to this one right falls a little under the, the, the moral umbrella. Yeah, because you know who you're dealing with with your, with your customer base. Yes. You know? So it's kind of taking advantage of. The cost, you know, what what you're dealing with, and I get it oh. that you know what you know only so strong survive and everything like that. But you know, it, it, if you end up slamming the crap out of your customers to the point where they're in debt, they're not going to come back. Yep, yeah. I agree. So, so. Uh, Graham, you brought Nintendo earlier um, with the Switch. Well, Nintendo is reportedly working on a Super NES Mini to launch this holiday, and. Um, which would explain why they stopped production on the NES Classic Mini. Yeah, I just but, really, really, really hope that they make enough of them and realize, wow, a lot of people are picking up more of these NES Classics than we were expecting. Which they kept announcing, they're like, oh, the demand was made way more than we're expecting. So now they know the problem. So if they do it again now, it's intentional. And I will not believe another word to come out of their mouth. Yeah, and on that note, if you want an NES Classic Mini at this point, on eBay they're running north of three hundred dollars, north of three hundred fifty yep. pounds. That is just that should be illegal. That should be. You it's know, an eighty dollar it, system in supply Canada. Supply and demand. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. you guys, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but um, after the 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 heyday of the Nintendo sixty four and GameCube, Nintendo has been allergic to making a profit. There is no reason in hell for them to stop making that mini. I mean, not the mini, the the NES Classic, because You're right. any, anybody and their mother can go out and buy a Raspberry Pi, put on the emulator on there, and have a working NES Classic. But what they do is they're catering to the people who don't know how to do it, or the lazy people like me who will just go pay the sixty dollars for the thirty games, feel like you know they're yeah. not doing anything absolutely illegal, and you know every all all. Fun and love in the kingdom. Well, plus you know, so it's I, it's it's a little nostalgia too because the console looks like the original. Yeah, that's why I want it's it. It's the same game yeah. pad. It's all that stuff, right? So right. There's that. Like part I know too. I can get all these games on an emulator, and I probably have them on a hard drive somewhere. But I just want the console. But it, it, it's like cutting off their head to spite their throat. I mean, just keep making them till the demand isn't there. Then cut it off, you know. And then maybe they'll yeah. be. With, They'll be worth seventy or eighty dollars on eBay later. Uh, you know? I'm sure they they have some business strategy behind it because yeah. Uh, first off, we, we don't we don't know how much they spent on licensing uh, on those games because a lot of those games are uh, the the developers the publishers are, are still active. Capcom, Konami, uh, there's a lot of publishers on there. Um, so um, you got that, and then you have two. Who knows what they're gonna do with the Switch? Because I have a strong feeling that they're gonna. Uh, have a retro a retro game pack where you can get all these games, all thirty games on one cartridge or something. Uh, it it kind of gonna... makes sense Maybe. too because the, the controller is capable of being an, a small NES controller, right? When you yeah. just take the one Joy-Con, so yeah, right. I think you're you're probably right with that, Eugene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... but 
but there's also an argument. To, to picture this, uh, Eugene, you'll know what this is like shortly. Um, you're going to have a kid, right? Um, you don't want to buy him a Nintendo Switch because it's an expensive piece of machinery. But he, he, she, whoever likes the old Super Mario game. So what do you do? You go spend the 60 bucks for the beat em up box, you know, instead of spending the, the yeah. hundreds of dollars on the Switch. Sure. So I can see that. But here, here's, here's my kind of retort is that that's all great and good that they've got Bless agreements you. with the developers and all that stuff. But once you release it, it's in the court of public opinion now and people don't care about the agreements with the developers. Yeah. And yeah. they're going to judge you based on the fact that you played this thing up big and then you released not nearly enough to meet customer demand and then shut it off. Yep. Well, they, they did shut it off because they're going to supposedly start in production of the Super NES Mini. So I'm wondering, I'm hoping, that after that's all said and done, they re-release the NES Mini again. Why not? Why not release them every two years, though? If, if they found that yeah. the demand's much higher, then put it, put it off for a year. We're going to get to that in a second with another company that held off delay of a console for a year. But <clears throat> Yeah, but, but, but this goes back to the collector's thing. I mean... You know, uh, okay, so you got the uh, you got the regular NES going right now. So let it let it lap over the Super NES just a little bit. So mm -hmm. you know, so okay, now I got the the makeshift NES. Now I got the makeshift Super NES. You know, um, don't cut it off before the other one is in play. I just don't see. Well, yeah. and God, God forbid you could ever bundle the two of them. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. So here here's what it comes down to. Uh, I stood in line at midnight and I got two of them. So. Yep. Huh? Uh, Graham. Uh, yeah. Actually, <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've I've had three at one point. I, I gave one to a, uh, I gave one to a, a coworker of mine. He bought it off me for retail, and then I gave one to my uh, uh, girlfriend's sister. So, so, some people got some use out of it. If you can yeah. find one for me, it would be greatly appreciated. I, I, I was about to say people are finding them all over at Best Buy's and Walmart right now. Yeah. So yeah. You, yeah. you need a you need to keep on keep track of that. Yeah. Um. But like I have a regular Super NES that's in pristine shape, and I got three controllers for it. You know, I really wish that you could buy the old cartridges for it with, without people thinking it's worth their weight in gold because it's not. Oh, I know. You know, I've got a couple of the ones that are hard to find, like Super Star Wars. You know, um, I've got that original uh, cartridge that has uh, Super Mario World and all the Mario's mm -hmm. on it. Yeah, Mario All Stars. So, yeah, Mario. Why, why don't Mario you get Oz. one of those Ultra carts? Like uh, they have a. Basically, modded carts where they have like 300 games on them. No, no kidding. You're gonna have to. Yeah, yeah they have that. They have that for NES. They they run a pretty penny though. They're about 100, 120 bucks. Um, hey, for for 300 million games, can't go wrong for 100. Yeah, bucks. yeah. I mean, they basically have like all the the major titles and uh, you know unknown titles at all, uh, all in all, but on all those cartridges. So, pretty huh. neat. All right. Cool. That's cool. I'll post a link on Facebook mm -hmm. and. Yeah. You yeah, so if anyone out there in the world is feeling very, very generous and find a second one that they want to part with, I would be more than happy to pay or to take it off your hands. Just putting that there. I, I think I'm going to just buy one, find one, and buy one and just put it in my gaming collection and just send you a picture of it. Okay, Maybe I'll trade some of my Zelda <laughs> merchandise towards it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> If you pre-order any horror platform or Little Nightmares for May 12th, a game I'm actually pretty interested in, you'll receive a copy of Inside for free, which was some people's game of the year last year for Xbox One. So I know Ryan McCaffrey at IGN put it down as his game of the year, so uh, you get a pretty good game for free if you pre-order that game by May 12th. Up next, if you're a fan of Twitch, it's adding two new subscription tiers above the $5 a month model. You'll soon be able to pay either ten or twenty-five dollars if you so choose. Can I ask why? I don't know. Why. Yeah, why? Why? Just if you why choose you to. Why do you subscribe to Twitch? I, I I don't use Twitch too often, but what are the benefits well, of subscribing? It's it's the benefit. The, it's the benefit the the person. Uh, like you're a fan of somebody, so you subscribe to them. Yeah, okay, see, I got you. And, I thought people. I yeah. thought you just paid out the money or whatever, gifted the money. You can oh, do that so you too. Can but choose you can, the yeah, you can do that too. But people grow faster based on the amount of subs uh, subscribers that they have. Right. So it's kind of like a status thing. So um, you have followers and then you have subscribers. So well, here, your, your subscribers are what gets you paid if you stream there. Here's my problem with this. Um, I know I have a very good idea of what a sub um, um, 
a streamer that has three to four thousand on a regular basis mm -hmm. makes. Mm -hmm. um, what they how it works now is you know you can you can subscribe for up to what is it like uh, is it three years yeah something like that something like that um, and you see them you know uh, homeboy resubbed for you know sixteen months and it's five dollars a month so you just yep. do the math you know it's one hundred thirty dollars um, there is no need for this this is just a greedy move I I, I don't <clears throat> understand well but the thing is why would choice, I want to pay twenty five dollars a month for something that I can pay five dollars a month for this but, is just but if you really support somebody and want to support you know you really enjoy somebody and you want to support them then that option's there for you you, you don't, don't to. need the damn money a good example yeah, of that is well, like agree, if though. you go into a museum and you pay what you want if anything some people yeah. will pay twenty five some people will pay nothing. So. Yeah, I mean they do, they donate to them all the time. They do something funny, or you know, if they're playing the the game and it's re, it's really worth the watching on their sometimes their thousands of like dollars, that. hundreds, yeah. hundreds, yeah. This thousands is just, of dollars. This is just it's completely unneeded, and it's just it's just a money grab. I, I think the the subscriptions are to build status, whereas I think the the donations are where they really make their money. Oh yeah, and, and donations are there for people who just want to give like a dollar. You know they can yeah. do that without committing to months and months of you know five dollars yeah. at a time. Yeah, it's like it's like so, a waitress. I mean, dude, your minimum wage is your subscriptions, and your donations are your tips. Yep, pretty much. So, but it's there if you want to use it. So uh, up next, Microsoft has confirmed that it will not host a pre three event around Scorpio. Will instead reveal it at E three. So that uh, that rumor that they're going to host something next month is uh, put to bed. They also Thanks. said. They could have released Scorpio in 2016, but they didn't want to because they didn't want to forsake frame rate for 4K. That's a little shot at Sony. And, <laughs> uh, jab, and, jab. And uh, they wanted to make sure that this console had it all. Yeah. So there's a little little jab at Sony there. Well, but, uh, yeah, but we'll, we'll see a lot more in less than two months now at E3 uh, around Scorpio. So I'm pretty excited for that. And I'm pretty yeah, sure what you're going to talk next we're going to see at E3 as well. What's that, Graham? I said, I'm pretty sure what you're going to talk about next will be shown at yes. E3 as well. And up next, something Graham's going to be really excited about, I'm sure, if he's not ready. Oh. Uh, hardware manufacturer AMD stated this week that Fallout 4 VR is groundbreaking and will change the industry. And is, quote, this game will be the Mario and Sonic of VR. Pop goes to boner. Why? Why compared to Sonic? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't if understand they're gonna why they why... say that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like Mario, I yeah. Like if you say it's like the Mario and Zelda VR, I get that. But I mean, I There's guess Sonic. No I guess Sonic had possibly, its role. No way, possibly that this is going to be as huge as this. I mean, are, are, I know you're a huge fan, Graham. Would, would you? Are you going to play Fallout again in, in VR? Yes, he will. Yes. Yeah, he is. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. I, I can't wait to jump in. The Wrong answer. Yeah, you, you gave me the answer I was not hoping for, but I should have figured. Oh no, you, you just don't know Graham that well. <laughs> like I know, <laughs> hey, I know he's gonna do this. Apparently will, not. Graham will spend like a thousand dollars if that's what he has to do to play Fallout 4 Listen, in VR. I'm still well, looking wait, at that, that treadmill concept thing where you walk on those like slip shoes. Oh, that, with the vibe. Yeah. Well, yeah. So it's the vibe, and it's this big treadmill that you go on. You're that would be, I don't, it's like probably going angle. way out of my range money-wise, but I think that would be an amazing experience, especially if you're doing mm -hmm. VR and you're looking for immersion and you want to be completely immersed in the Fallout world, which mm -hmm. I would pay good money for, then that would be amazing. But I'm sure it's going to be really high priced and just for people with lots of money, even probably people that are on these gaming sites that get paid for, right? Like yeah. Some, yeah. Well, some guy like me. Well, you've got the gaming rig that's that's VR ready, right? Yes. So you just have to get the VR hardware now. Yes. And yep. and buy the game. The game's not going to be like two hundred dollars. It's going to be sixty bucks. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I totally see you getting this. Do you? Do you? Think, <laughs> oh, yeah. you the, I will. You're the guy who almost spent eight hundred dollars on a Lord of the Rings collection. Oh boy. Just because I thought about it didn't mean I was going to. <laughs> You, so do you think so? They're going to charge for this VR, right? It's not going to be like a patch to where if you have a VR, oh, this totally, certain VR yeah. headset. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, they're going to try to make some money I, out of it. I'm not sure. I don't know how it works, so I can't speculate. I, I'll, I'll, we'll I'll make sure they charge for it. Yeah, wow. I mean they're they're putting a lot into it. Oh and, yeah, they seem to be. And really, if if this is what AMD's saying, 
And, and yeah. I hope it is because VR needs this. VR needs something to set the bar. For if anyone can do, if anyone for. can do it, then Bethesda can do it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So and it's then, the whole teleporting thing, though. That's what gets me off because that takes away from it, right? So I'm just yeah. wondering how they go about doing this. I don't know, but it would pave the way for games like you know Red Dead Two. I would love to play that in VR. Are you kidding? And be feel like you're immersed in that world. Mm-hmm. That'd be awesome. Um, I don't know about GTA. That would be a little much, maybe. But but uh, being immersed in those worlds are, would be really, really cool if it's done. Oh, right. my God. What? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yes. did, a, did a spider wow. fall on you or something? Wow. <laughs> oh, God. Did, did a wasp oh. sting you? I, I guess Mike's not getting a VR. Uh, no, I guess not. No, he's Mike. very upset oh. about it. Something's Sorry, angry. guys. It smells like a fucking um, sewer main just broke under, underneath our apartment. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, I don't smell that, yes. I'm glad it's over there. Well, it's good but, you guys don't look hear behind this, not, you for the source. Smell what's going on. <laughs> oh, my God. So, all right, up next on uh, Easy Transition. Um, no, <laughs> Microsoft wow. announced. Microsoft announced finally in news that you can get refunds now from the Xbox easy. Store if you're part of the preview program in the right ring or whatever it's called. Uh, you'll you So two things for this. You have had to make the purchase in the last 14 days and have played the game for less than two hours total. Now, I noticed, Tyler, it says game. So for chance, if you purchase a Star Wars collection by accident, would this be something that you could... Get for free. (laughs) (laughs) Like like I did? Get it canceled. (laughs) Yeah. Because um, you have a yes, it I, yeah, them. yeah. I think so. I think it applies to all media. I just put it for games here. Yeah. Um, so I, I would bet for movies. Though you, you probably can't have started the movie or whatever. So, so I think this is a good idea too. Because say someone buys a bunch of games or something like that, and then they realize, wow, I've not played that game at all or that game. So it was like this is potentially sixty or eighty bucks or whatever that I could get back. So then yeah. they're like, okay, then I'll just get a refund. So I think it's great for that, because me personally, I have probably a few games which I paid for. Division would be a good example. Yeah. I would just get my money back from that. Yeah, well, but obviously, unfortunately you can't. Though. Unfortunately, no, that's you can't what I'm saying. Anymore. Obviously, you got to watch out for the 14 day thing. Yeah. So my question so, is, so for example, South Park. South Park. So that's yeah. why I'm asking about. So how do how would pre-orders work? It's pre-ordered, so, so it doesn't it doesn't count as two weeks actually owning the game from from yeah, launch. Because okay. you don't own the game yet. So with South yeah. Park, you'd be able to go on there and cancel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. So it's being rolled out and testing right now, and not available to everyone quite yet. So once it gets through preview program, it'll be available to everybody. I'm guessing at some point over the summer. So probably right around E3 actually. So. Uh, Anything, right. else from, anything else from you guys on that? Nope, that's it for me, man. All right, everybody, that's, that's going to do it for the news this week. Graham, let's turn it over to you. What can we get in stores? Well, there seems to be a going trend for uh, next week's releases, and that's sequels. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, we have Outlast 2 releasing for PC, Xbox, and PS4. Now, PC players will get, to be, will get the first chance to play this game because it releases on the 24th for PC. And then the following day on the 25th for Xbox and PS4. Except Australia. Now, <laughs> except, yeah. No one cares about the dingles. No. Um, a, a couple other titles releasing across all three platforms as well is Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. Now, this title releases on April 25th on PC, Xbox, and PS4. Mm-hmm. And on April 28th, we have Little Nightmares for the same platforms. Right. And that's the one where you get inside for free, right? Yes. So how All much right. is Little Nightmares? Is it a $40 game or $60 game? I'm not sure. I'm going to guess it's 60 the fact that it comes with inside for free. Yeah. But uh, I, I didn't look up any prices. I mean, if it's like 40 or if it's... I, I don't know much about that game, so I can't speak towards it, but it doesn't sound like a AAA game, so I didn't know if it was like a... A forty dollar game or a thirty dollar game or something like that, it, but it'd be totally worth it if it's like thirty bucks and you get a twenty dollar game with it. Well, they they tried that with sticks. Um, the first one that came out was like twenty bucks, you know, and it was pretty solid for being an indie game. Then they bring, get brought out the second one and they charged sixty bucks for it. It probably didn't sell that well because now you can get sticks one and two for sixty bucks. Yeah, well they tried. 
So uh, we have three titles that share release dates on the Xbox One and PS4, and those titles are Siberia 3, Valhalla Heals Definitive Edition, and Outlast Trinity. Uh, mm. All three titles will be releasing on April 25th. And the PS4 will share a couple of new release titles with PC players. We have What Remains of Edith Finch, question everyone always asks, and Dragon Quest Heroes <laughs> 2. Both titles will be available on April 25th. Now, let's move over to the Nintendo Switch. We have three new titles coming at us. Boing. We have Puyo Puyo Tetris, which will Wait, what was also... that? <laughs> listen, you can what, listen what? to the podcast and you can hear it again. Wait, what was that? Puyo Puyo Tetris. Puyo, is that Spanish? Possibly. Oh my god, move on. Which will also be released on the PS4, and that release date is the 25th. Next, we have Constructor, which also releases on the PC, along with the Switch, which will be available on both platforms on April 28th. And the third title game released on Nintendo Switch next week is a title that's been highly anticipated ever since it was revealed that it would be playable on the Nintendo Switch. And that game, of course, is... Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Woo! We'll finally see the light of day on April 28th. Now, this mm-hmm. game will have a total of 48 courses and 42 characters, including some bonus ones, and will feature a new 200cc speed class. Hell yeah. And the best thing is, everything will Bomb be down. unlocked from the start. You don't have to worry about grinding Very through nice. it on characters and vehicles. Whoa, whoa. I, I haven't heard that. Well, that's, that's crazy. True. Huh. That's and cool. I pre-ordered it because it got a 9.3 from IGN. Wow. And the original game, which came out on the Wii U, only got a 9. So it got a little boost. And uh, just going to be a lot more feature for like, battle mode. It runs, it, run, it runs at 1080 and uh, 60 frames, so I'm excited for that. So it's going to yeah. work. So That's I'm really going to po- yeah, post my uh, friend code on our Facebook page again. So I'll be playing that next Friday. Yeah, and I'll post mine as well. And uh, you guys can just hit us up and... Uh, Kick my butt in Mario Kart. Yeah, Tyler, you need to pick that up too. I love Mario yeah, I'm gonna, Kart. I'm gonna grab it. I'll grab it. <clears throat> so that's all I got, guys. All right, Mike. What can we save money on? Um, you know what, dude? This is like the fourth week in a row that, that he has had no Japanese titles. I'm sensing a little, uh, little avoidance over there. Maybe. I I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the best part, Grammy, is when you butcher the Japanese stuff. You gotta get. Well, you gotta I, find some, man. I'm not Japanese, so it's 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 okay. But it's in English. <laughs> <laughs> That's your opinion. Uh-huh. All right. Games of Gold for free this month. Um, we still got Rise available to the end of the month. Right now, you can also get The Walking Dead season two till the mid month of May. Um, Darksiders is no longer available if you didn't get it, it's your loss uh, but Assassin's Creed uh, Revelations is available for the rest of the month on 360 Isn't that so, one of the better ones? Which one? What? Ooh. Revelations That's supposed to be like one of the better ones That's part of the, the uh, trilogy, right? Uh, it's it's my least favorite out of those three Okay, the, but the, it is part the, of the trilogy, right? Like yes, the, yeah, okay. that it is the best trilogy, Assassin's Creed Two. Yeah. Okay. Out of all the out of all the Assassin's Creed, my favorite is by far and away is the fourth one, Black, Black, Black Flag. Flag. Yeah. And then, uh, um, the, why why can I not think of it right now? The one that takes place in London. Oh, uh, sh- Brotherhood. No, oh, Unity. Um, U- Unity. Unity. No, Unity. Not Unity. Yeah, Unity. it's Unity. No, it's not Unity. Unity is crap. What? Yeah, it's not you. You have the one where you the brother, the sister. Yeah, Syndicate. syndicate. There yeah, you go. Syndicate. I didn't like Syndicate. Hey, what do I it win? It didn't grab me. It didn't grab me, so I didn't really enjoy it. No, yeah, you're Miami right. Uh, Unity, Unity was in France, I think. Is the French Revolution or something? Yeah, that yes, had all you're right. the problems. It can't, it, um, matter of fact, uh, um, Luckbox over here uh, managed to win an Xbox One with Unity. It came with. It. I did. I did. Yep. I love. I love Unity. I, I know it had some frame rate issues and people had those glitches but anyway all right so uh ps4 has got drawn to death then they got lovers in a dangerous space time uh invisibles the lost kingdom alien rage 10 second ninja and curses in chaos um that is the first two are ps4 second two are ps3 and last two are vita cross by on ps4 
So those are the free stuff. Um, as far as uh, you know, what, what they got what games with gold this week and uh, PS4 deals. You can check them out on the on their uh, their sites. But there is one on the Xbox which is Elite Dangerous uh, Commander Edition. Um, if you don't have the game at all, this is perfect. It's forty dollars and nineteen cents. You get both the the base game. You get Horizon, so you can land on the planets. Plus, you get um, a bunch of uh, skins that you can't get anywhere else. And if for the forty dollars and nineteen cents, instead of having to pay out uh, like sixty-five dollars, it's it's definitely worth it. So if you haven't, if you like space simulators and you haven't checked out Elite Dangerous yet, um, download the trial, give it a shot, and if you're going to buy it, do it this week and get the Commander Edition. Okay, so we're going to move over to the what Xbox deals out there in the real world. Um, one of them didn't pan out, so we're going to move over to the Xbox Elite Controller. Um, if you are a new member, new member account, dis, uh, new new account discount via Jet.com, you can get an Xbox Elite controller for one hundred seven sixty four right now. Hmm. So that's not bad at all. Um, on a Rush Hour wholesaler via eBay, you can get an Xbox One S wireless controller in black, newest model for thirty eight ninety nine. Um, Graham, since yeah. you break all your controllers, Let's see, um, I'm a, play NHL with heart. Yeah. Controller just can't handle it. <laughs> One of my deals just went dead. It was 12 months EA Access subscription for $20.15 via CD Keys. That's the lowest I've seen it. Hmm. Um, which means it'll be it'll be coming back around soon. Uh, Recore is $15.85 on Amazon. Prime eligible, so you can get it in two days. It is definitely worth $15.85. That game yes. did not get enough coverage. It was kind of like Sunset Overdrive. It sort of just fell by the wayside. That's a know? fun game. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, it, it's worth it. It really is. And we move over to the PS4 deals. Um, right now, there are two movies on sale for fifty cents at the PlayStation Store to rent. Um, that would be uh, um, the, the monstrous movie. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, let me pop on here. It's the Assassin's Creed movie, which made it to video, and it's the the new Harry Potter spinoff movie. What's that called? Uh, yeah, Fantastic, Fantastic Beasts. Beast. And where yep. to find them? Yeah, both you can rent right now for fifty cents a pop. I mean, come on, it's fifty cents. You know that that's a really, really, really good deal. Come on, you know? come yeah. on, come yeah. on. What are you waiting <laughs> for? Rub those two quarters together. All right, this is a good one. PS4 Slim, five hundred gigabyte, Uncharted Four bundle comes with an extra DS4 controller, two sixty nine at Ant Online via eBay. Um, for you people who do not trust eBay people, they have uh, um, the Charted 4 bundle without the extra controller at Best Buy for $269. Um, XCOM is $29.99, Amazon.ca. There you go, for all you Canadians out there. That's a little something, something for you. Appreciate it. Yo, you're welcome, dude. Anything I can do. Now, <laughs> whatever you do, if you're listening to this in your car, do not have your hand on the e-brake. But... Duck Dynasty is three dollars at Walmart right now. <laughs> Come on, Come on. That, that's pocket change. For a movie. I already paid two hundred dollars for it, man. The world's yeah, didn't you get? Man. You got the collector's edition with the uh, duck decoy and uh, duck. the thing that you, the duck call that you can, you can wear on your wrist. Yeah. Yes. Called ducks all day. It comes with a beard too. <laughs> yeah. I got the shirt that says "I ain't gay, and neither are you." Yeah, that, that, that was in the Super Collector's Edition. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Borderlands The Handsome Collection is a whopping eleven ninety nine via GCU at Best Buy right now for the PS4. But that's going to do it for the PS4. There are a couple of head scratchers I've got for the Switch. So I don't know if these are great deals, but I know that they are on um, they are deals right now. Uh, Amazon Warehouse coupon for games and accessories. So that covers every single console right now. Is an additional ten dollars off, fifty dollars or more through four twenty three with with code Earth ten. So you got three days, three days, gentlemen, three days. Nintendo Switch controller in Germany is sixty four ninety nine euros, which is more expensive than the dollar. So that's actually a really good price. Um, Nintendo Switch, Graycon Joy, I'm uh, sorry, Gray Joycon starter bundle is. Four ninety nine. You get Zelda Breath of the Wild, one two Switch, Pro Controller, and a deluxe travel case and a travel protection screen. So, hmm. got that. and that's with the and console, now, right? Yeah, 
Okay. Yeah, I think it equals it equals up to be the same price. At least one and, great game. Yeah, so if you need a switch. You're not gonna find any amazing amazing, you know, deals right now, but I'm just listing off what, what is sure. available. Sure. Um for pre order right now through GameStop, you can get the Mario Kart eight Neon Switch bundle with Breath of the Wild and a hundred and twenty eight gigabyte S D card for four ninety nine. So and it ships five five. So there's always that too. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to um, 3DS, and the only thing I really see in 3DS is these two things. This Pokemon Sun is $29.99, and Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World is $29.99 as well. And that's where I wipe my hands of this and take it away, Tyler. <laughs> All right. So, what's everybody been playing this week? Who wants to go first? Those I can go. Themselves. Yeah, I can go. Uh, right. So, I've actually... Uh, I've been playing a lot of Xbox recently because I did purchase a Xbox One S. I was able nice. to pick one up for uh, uh, 260, which I already had an Xbox One. I have a day one edition, but uh, I sure. wanted one for my game room. Um, so I put the Xbox One S, hooked it up to my 4K TV, and uh, brought my old Xbox to the game room. Uh, but that uh, the Xbox One S also came with a cap- copy of Battlefield. I got the Storm Gray edition. Nice. Um, nice. It came oh, with nice. Battlefield, and it also came with a month of EA Access. So I've been cool. playing a lot of uh, uh, I've been playing a lot of those EA Access games. Um, yeah. I, I played a little bit of Madden. Uh, I downloaded I Star Wars. Yeah, I, I, mm-hmm. I downloaded Star Wars. Uh, I'm gonna play that soon. Uh, yeah. But I, then uh, since NHL 17's on EA Access now, all I had to do was wait one month. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's yeah, since it's on my hard drive, uh, you know, I can play with that disco. So I actually played the most out of NHL this week. Uh, make, I make sure I also. You- Make sure you play Peggle and Unravel. I already, I've already beaten Peggle too, and uh, Unravel. Uh, I did download it, so I will be playing it. Definitely uh, play that game. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna play it. I watched a trailer, and I'm gonna play it with my girlfriend. So, because, and I'm gonna play it on the 4K TV because it just looks stunning. Yeah, sure. it, it's um, amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what else? What else did I play? I played a little bit of Persona, uh, yeah. Persona Five, a little bit more of it. I also, uh, I tried out the. Uh, I'm in the beta program for the Xbox uh, subscription plan for Xbox games. Okay. Yep. So I, I tried it out, and it, it seems pretty legit. Um, just depends on... I'm not sure what the pricing structure is going to be yet on it, but it, it seems pretty solid. I mean, the games that they already they have on there in the beta program are mm-hmm. games I already own. Yeah, so yeah. Basically, the games everybody owns pretty yeah, much. Yeah, so basically, it op- all it does is open a portion of the Xbox store to you, and those games are free to download. Right. Uh, so that's how it works. Uh, I, I wasn't sure how it worked if we had covered it at all. Yeah. Uh, there's something else that I was playing. I wrote on to bring it. Oh yeah, uh, I got the Disney Afternoon Collection yesterday. So how I, is I played, oh, How was that? How you played it. That? Uh, so I only played uh, Ducktales uh, with it uh, yesterday, but uh, I mean I, I'm excited for it. It's twenty dollars. I I, um, I picked it up for Xbox. Uh, mm. Yeah, but I'm definitely gonna play a little bit of that more tonight. But uh, I mean it comes with like five games. Yeah. yeah, six games, six games, six yeah. games. I think six games. Yeah, I think uh, it's six. Ducktales one and two comes in Rescue Rangers one and two, uh, Darkwing Duck and Tailspin. So yeah, hmm. Uh, hmm. yeah. So uh, I'll be playing that a little bit tonight. But really, NHL. I played uh, a little bit of NHL with you guys too. Didn't win, but no, we didn't. You can't blame me. Yes, we can. Yeah. No. You can try. You can try. To be to be fair. We're dropping this poor guy in. Like, I, I know, I know. And we're, no, no, no. Like, this poor guy is like, trying to learn the game, too. And we're <laughs> dropping him in like in Division 1, which is like playing against the best people out there. Like Last night we played... Was it last night, Mike, or the night before? We be played night before. night before. We played a team that was ranked 120th. Oh, really? And it, it went exactly how you think it would go. No, um, that's not true. Because but, we 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 were we were losing three to two going into the third, and then all of a sudden, true. you know, shit just went we sideways. Were, it did. And we were down three nothing. We scored two, got to three two, and then they just kind of took over, and it just it did. It went sideways, but you know that happens. And I, I don't know if it was one of those things where they like decided, hey, we're you know it was a little too close for us, so let's go to all of our go tos, you know, that we know work or whatever. Um, yeah, it didn't feel like we were being toyed with because I've, I've, we've had games, and you know that, where you feel like this team's super good and they're just kind of playing with us right now. Um, Not and this then they year, turn man. it on. I, I, we've had a couple, though, where I felt that this year. 
Um, but then we've had games against, like, we had a game against the top 100 team, like, in the top 60, that we went to, like, double overtime with. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we actually beat. Yeah. yeah. And I actually, so, I, I was just joking, you can blame me a little bit. Because uh, I did have some yeah. network issues, uh, because the game would just freeze on me. <laughs> the game would just freeze on me, and, yeah. like, and you guys are like, what are you doing? I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing, because my guy's just yeah. in one spot. And I, probably yeah. on your guys' screen, I'm like going off in the the end of the you know the rink or whatever. Uh, yeah. So I'm sure it looked crazy. But actually, when I played, uh, whenever I played, I, I play online free play or whatever the rank. And uh, I we actually won a lot of games, and I felt like uh, I did pretty well against those people. Good. So, yeah, they Good. suck. Those, those those guys suck compared to uh, playing in uh, EA Sports Hockey League. Oh yeah, yeah. like we're, like I said, man, we're in Division One. We're playing against the best players there are. Yeah. yeah, for the most part. So, and, and once in a while, you know, you run into a team that's not very good, but once in a while, you run into a team that's like really, really solid. And yeah. they just clog up the lanes, they do everything right, and it, it's really tough to win. So, yeah, what else I mean, you got? it's. Um, yeah, go ahead. Anything else, Eugene? Uh, one more thing before I go. Uh, uh, I looked up Little Nightmares, it's $34.99. Uh, oh, there you so go. You, wow. get a, you, get a, you get a $20 game with a brand new game, so kind of yeah. worth it. Well yeah. worth it. That's it. That's all I got. All right. Um, I'll go ahead and go next. Uh, I've played a lot of MLB The Show this week. And hmm. be on vacation and uh, playing in Diamond Dynasty mostly. And uh, playing in like the head to head there, their seasons thing. Um, been working my way up that. It's it's so much fun. The game is so good. It's just the best on sports game there is. The but, best. Uh, it yeah. is the, the best, yeah. the biggest, the best, the most amazing. And, you know, the. We'll take away all the baseball games and replace it with something terrific, and it'll be this game. And but no, the, the game is just amazing. It's awesome. Um, every year they Sunny San Diego knocks it out of the park with MLB. So, uh, congrats to them again on another great game. Um, I'm having a really tough time getting the timing down uh, as a hitter, and not so much like um, when to swing, but like pitch recognition. And it's uh, it's a challenge, but getting better at it. Um, it seems harder this year than it was in previous years playing like um, uh, franchise or whatever. So, but I've been playing a lot of that. Played some NHL. Uh, played some Battlefield One. I played uh, the new DLC. They shall not pass. Um, really cool maps there. Uh, really like the layout. Really like the kind of the size and and how everything lays. You know, just kind of flows. Really, mm-hmm. uh, really good. Uh, really well done. So, I uh, really enjoy myself playing that. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've played. Um, not off the top of my head. But I will say that I was looking through some past articles I'd written uh, for a website today. And, and it makes me kind of want to to go back and play Unravel again because I saw the, the review I'd written for that game. So I might yeah. I might dive back into that and play that game through again. It's been over a year since i played it. So um, really good. But uh, Graham or Mike, who wants to go next? What about you? Uh, Mike, oh. you go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> what do you want? Okay. What do you want to do? No, what do you want to do? Um, well, Tyler made up for the lack of games I played because <laughs> it's. I wouldn't really say it was a busy week, but I was out and I was doing other stuff, and I really didn't get much gaming in. I don't think I played any games, to be honest with you. So Tyler made up for me. So mm-hmm. I'm done. Okay, Mike, your turn. All what right. did you play? No, it's your turn. <laughs> I played NHL with these bumbling idiots as usual. Um, Not this bumbling uh, idiot. <laughs> yeah, well. Um, played some Mass Effect Andromeda, started getting back into that. Uh, I, it's it's really hard for me to get into that game. I don't know why. I uh, am forcing myself. Maybe it's because they keep leading you around by your chin. Um, and I have been playing the hell out of Diablo. Oh, I forgot. I've been playing Diablo 3, too. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I got Diablo on the spring sale uh, for $20. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, bought, I bought Diablo 2. And yeah. I told your ass just to jump in my game when I'm playing, but... Uh. I, I didn't see you online. Um, it, I think you were playing, like, one night at, like, 2 in the morning, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to play. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> so, a good good news uh, with, the, with that is, so whenever I played on 360, that's why I yeah. played Diablo 3 the most, uh, whenever oh. it first came out, my character was still there. Oh yeah. So cool. I, I have a I have a level sixty two barb on there, and I have like these ridiculous weapons and armor sets. But uh, no one plays level on sixty two. You don't have anything ridiculous. 
Uh, how much damage do you do? Uh, I can't. I don't have the stat right now, but I am in season, so it is an entirely different character. Gotcha. I am on torment seven because if I have, I have a demon hunter. So if I have all three of my um, sentries out, I deal an extra thirty six hundred percent damage. Okay. Um, plus on top of the fifty percent I have on my grenade. So all I do is pop three sentries and start throwing grenades, and I also have the thing that makes it so the sentry will do whatever I do with my special. So it, it it's just I just lay waste. I, I know whenever I was playing Reaper of Souls, because uh, I transferred my character from Xbox to PlayStation, so I have no idea why it's still on Xbox. Um, but I was doing about 1.2 million damage. I don't know what what 1. I'm doing. 1.2 million damage. Just just I think I'm on. Let that sink in. I think I just <laughs> hit Paragon 70. So okay. Yeah. Well, I completely I forgot I bought You're a level game, 62 so guy there's no way that me. he is doing as much damage as I am there's just absolutely no way cuz once you hit level 70 shit changes um so I've been playing a lot of Diablo seasons um and uh that's about it oh I started uh what I did start installing a bunch of games that I wanted and updating the ones that I wanted to play again like uh I have I have never finished Dark Souls 3 for some reason so that got updated. Um, the Don't Starve Giant Edition got updated. Um, let's see, uh, Forza Three because I, I sort of just you know it's sort of like just dabbing at every once in a while. I like that game a lot though. Um, you know, so I got stuff I'm gonna be playing. So that's pretty so, much. So, so Mike, I do have some some good news for you. Oh, this ought to be good. I was what? watching the previews and I was kind of looking at you know games that are coming out and yeah. looking at the trailers for them. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to get City Skylines. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, man, it's a great game. So, plus, so maybe, plus I, you know, chip in, like, we'll go half on it? Yep. Okay, gotcha. cool. We good. All right. Because um, uh, um, they, they have... I, they have a bunch of add-ons, and I was reading. I was reading the Xbox One Reddit today. I did not see if all of the add-ons are in there, but I do know that the nighttime add-on is in there. There are no mods right now, which is fine because you don't really need them. And yeah. it, the game is really integral, and there there are far more than just build your city and sit there and click and watch. You know, there there's yeah. all kinds of like that, that's what know, I like about it. It looks like waves. it's a lot. Yeah, death waves and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so it looks really I'm, cool. I'll definitely go happy's on that with you. Okay, awesome. So fire away tonight or tomorrow or whatever. All right, sweet. So, all right, that's it for what we've been playing. Let's move into discussion. We actually have some questions from our community this week. Thank you for submitting them. Uh, you. Eugene, you want to read them off for us? Yeah, so we have several questions this week. Uh, we have four questions submitted that we've selected for the show. Um, one of them is a, it's a two-part question. Uh, uh, they're kind of related, so I'm going to read them together. Uh, yes. The first one is from Steve Wiseman. He asks, does Xbox need to kill it at E3 this year? PlayStation, PlayStation has had some great games come out recently, while Xbox has done nothing, has had nothing, rather. And then Alex Sullivan also asks, uh, has Xbox done enough to make the Scorpio a day one buy for you? Okay. Anybody want to go first on that? Yeah, or? I'll go, for, I'll go okay. first on this, absolutely. Um, there have been big hitters in the industry like Vestetta, and uh, <laughs> I can't. I can. You think it was Japanese? Word. Yeah, I cannot yeah, yeah. do that word. I cannot do that word. Um, there's been some pretty heavy hitters in the industry that have said, "Yo, Scorpio is a real deal," you know. So I have a fun. I have. I have a tendency to believe these people because their reputations are on the line for coming out and saying this. Yes. You know, is is the Scorpio a day one buy for me? Yes. And to answer the the other question is, is you know, um, do, does Microsoft need to, you know, really, really, really bring it on? Here's the thing: it's in their best interest right now to to, to fire off a finishing move on PlayStation mm -hmm. at this E3. So yeah, absolutely, fatality, big time. They 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 got to knock. They don't have to, but you know, they're going to, and they're going to finish this in. Till the dust settles when PlayStation comes back and says, "Okay, well, we got the PlayStation Five now, and 
And you know, then you go, then they go, okay, well, here's the attachment you can buy to make your your uh, Scorpio, you know, ultra fucking powerful. That's more powerful than the PS4 for fifty nine dollars or whatever. How much memory is going to be at the going rate at that point? Sure. So, yeah, um, that's my take on it. I, I'm not even worried about Scorpio. Would I buy it blind uh, day one right now? Yes, absolutely. All right. Grammar so it, de- it depends on the price for me. And I've uh, seen some rumors. Uh, there's a Spanish website that may possibly have, have leaked the Scorio. Uh, the Scorio. The Scorio. <laughs> the Scorios. What was the Scorio and the Scorpio? And you get and you sit That's there like a Canadian word. For, for is that the new, is that the new Sega Scor- console? Yeah, the, the the Sega Scorio. No, it's okay. uh, it's what Canadians ask. Uh, Whatever playoffs are going on in the NHL, uh, what's Scorio? The Leaf Scorio. <laughs> no, no, he gives me shit for for making Graham repeat what he said during his thing, but then just completely okay, butchers that. Okay, <laughs> Mister Bassetta. Okay, <laughs> so it, is it a day one buy for me? So I think the Spanish website leaked uh, is three ninety nine, three hundred ninety nine pounds, three hundred ninety nine pounds, seventy five hundred dollars, four hundred fifty dollars uh, U.S. Wow, I you know I think that's right in the sweet spot though. Yeah, I so, said I mean, four seventy five. I'm gonna lose the prices right, but I'm take, damn close. Take, take it as a take it with a grain of salt. But I mean, at four fifty, uh, I'll, I'll start saving my pennies until uh, the Scorpio releases. Yep. I'll definitely buy it. Uh, but what? But do they have to win? I, I already think. I already think they're gonna win, uh, unless Sony just pulls something out of left field that just is just grabs us. Um, what something they're gonna launch two years from now? Two. I mean, my, two would be an improvement. I the mean, crowd, I, I, crowd will jizz on. themselves, you know. It'll be like, you know, the first row in SeaWorld, and then, you know. They, they just nothing. can't have another flop like uh, the PS4 Pro. Um, yeah. But my, my concern is, have you guys seen the floor space um, that Microsoft has uh, at E3? Aren't they have, using uh, the Gale Center again? No, as far, I'm, I'm not sure how the layout is, but I, I've seen a map uh, with the Xbox's uh, floor space, and it is small in comparison to Nintendo and, and definitely PlayStation. It's less than Play, half Yeah, they five. use different arenas, and the Xbox uses the arena where USC basketball plays, the Galen Center. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure where Xbox, or I'm, I'm sorry, where Sony and Nintendo do theirs. But Xbox has used Galen Center for the last few years, so it won't be any different than what we've seen in the past few years. It looks like changed. It looked like a Nintendo and uh, Nintendo and uh, Xbox and like Bethesda still share the same building. And then it looks like Sony has a building on its own, to me anyway, that, mm. for looking at the map. So um, I, I think Sony has something in mind, but I really do think that Xbox is, is going to win E3, if I was to predict anything, just with the announcement of the Scorpio. And I think uh, maybe Bethesda has something with their, up their sleeve to support the support the new console. I think that's uh, what's going to happen. Primarily, primarily they have to, VR. right? They were talking about it last week. Oh, yeah, yeah. And definitely with all the debacle with uh, with the Fallout. Um, On Sony? Mods, the mod support, and then the Skyrim yeah. mod support. With uh, they, they have a poor relationship with Sony right now. Yeah, so. no Fallout Shelter for PlayStation either. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I think they're they're definitely in Xbox's... Uh, um, on an Xbox side, when it ever comes yeah. to support, but, so that's my but, that's not, that's my two cents. But Sony will absolutely win E3 because it'll a bunch of be a bunch of people that you know take their hands above their their head and put them down and peel their nose back and go Sony won the E3. I, I mean, all Sony has to do is say Last of Us 2 2017. Yeah, that that's yeah. And, uh, oh my God, Sony second. wins. <laughs> Graham, do you have anything on this? Well, I would say that Microsoft is going to win it. Like, in my opinion, where they officially win it, I don't know. But I got a feeling like PlayStation <laughs> is probably just going to buy up with like a lot of exclusives. They're going to be like, okay, you get play content first on PlayStation. I think that's what they're going to try like to force against Microsoft. But overall, I think Scorpio is going to steal the show, especially like when PlayStation, as far as we know, has nothing to compare to it. And like I said, they'll yeah. announce games coming out in 2018 and 19 and 2020 and stuff like that. But I, I really yeah. feel like Microsoft is going to steal it. And I'm definitely looking forward to it. And like I said, they got the partners on board, which makes it more exciting for me. Yeah. And the other part is that a day one purchase for Scorpio. Now, the, the biggest thing that offsets me is my 4K TV is not HDR capable. 
But it seems like it still does a lot to, like, for backwards compatible 360 games and Xbox One Mm -hmm. games make it faster and better looking. And, like, I'm just wondering what they're going to bring to about the VR and if the Vive is going to be compatible with it or the Oculus Rift or both or a different one. But I don't know if I'm going to buy it right away. We'll see. Price is a big thing, like Eugene was saying, because if I don't feel the necessary need to spend all that money. I can still have a great experience with my Xbox One S. Sure. But for a lot of people, I see it being a day one buy, especially if they don't mm-hmm. have a 4K capable console or a 4K Blu-ray player. So, yep. yeah. Hey, Grammy. That's so, my, yes, Mike. Hey, Grammy. All right. Are you gonna you gonna cycle it in the defensive zone and you know keep up the pressure on the four check and you know, play your game and, you know. <laughs> he, he kind of did. Yeah, Graham, you didn't kind of go like, <laughs> you, Graham, you kind of went like in between interview period there, or in between, yep. inter- between period interview there, sorry. Um, no, where, you need to where you just kind of say to like, you know, uh, yeah, we're just going to, you know, keep the pressure on, get the puck behind their defense, and, you know, we'll just keep playing our game. Yep. Yeah. And we'll see, how, we'll see how it plays out. Hopefully we get yeah. bounces our way, and uh, you know, we, hopefully we, you know, we, we come out on top. You know, we got this far playing this way, and we're not going to adjust how they how they play. We just got to play our game. Gonna play our game, and you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so what else? What I'll say is everybody thinks Sony wins E3 every single year. Yes, and that's because Sony comes and blows their load at E3 every single year with every game that's coming out between now and 2027. <laughs> oh, so I, I want to argue that because last year's oh. E three, I think Xbox blew it away whenever they announced Scorpio and and the. I did too. I did too. Yeah. But but if you look like at God so, of War is so, coming out okay. in five years. So time out. So who's the which? And I and I hate to bash them because I love them, but which gaming like journalism company is the biggest has the most prominent company every year? I know year. where you're going with this. And, IGN. and they Parody. proclaimed roundly, they they practically had a circle jerk and proclaimed roundly that or soundly that Sony was the winner. I remember that. I like they're because, like wow, that was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Because the life. Last of Us, and, like, and you guys because, got because, to admit, yeah, but they announced so, okay, but not just the Last of Us. They announced you know, and it was God mostly around course. Kojima. It's their, it's their love affair with Kojima. And the fact that, you know, somebody's got these awesome games that are going to come out sometime between now and when I collect Social Security. And, <laughs> and it's maybe. So, everybody thinks Sony that. wins every single year, but Do Microsoft focuses... It? Microsoft focuses on games that are coming out either this year or next year. And yes, there have been missteps like Scalebound or, um, what's the other one, Cuphead, that yeah. have been delayed. But and I was going to say, wasn't... another game, too, PlayStation announced that, that came Gale out yeah, was La- The Last Guardian, which was a disappointment. Yeah, and The Last Guardian yeah. was a got excited about. Well, I mean, yeah. you, you look at people in the stands, like, you know, the and, and yes, when you get to the layout of the arena, Eugene, you're right in one sense that the the layout of, like, Sony's arena, they put a bunch of fans down in the bottom. So when you get these reactions, it's like people like standing up, like crying, and oh, yeah. tears running down their face, and like holding their hands <laughs> over their head, like they've been waiting for the Last Guardian forever. Not you know who cares if the game like their blows. First K-pop concert. Yeah, pretty much. And and uh, and Xbox puts the media in the front and puts the fans in the upper deck. And you know what? And maybe that's a mistake. Maybe it is. But the bottom line I, is, I I thought Xbox killed it last year. I thought they when they announced Scorpio at the end, I thought that was a, a complete game changer. Yeah, when, whenever and, I saw it, I was like, the, the, "That's it, they just won." Yeah. and yeah. but yet everybody proclaimed Sony the winner. Not because everybody. they talked. Well, IGN did, well, and IGN that's did. the biggest one. And and uh, and we were watching because the because they announced IGN. God of War. God of War. When's that coming yeah. out? We still have no <laughs> idea. Um, yeah, nope. Death Stranding. We don't even know what it is. Looks like a game. father simulator. Yeah, d- to me, Death Stranding was a flop at last year's E3. But, oh, but man, not, God of War. But God not War everybody was else. So good. Yeah, I, I have no idea why it was such what about, a. What about Shenmue? Only because Kojima. What about Shenmue three or four or whatever the hell? I mean, and that let's, zombie one too, whatever that was called. Oh yeah, that was supposed to come out like early this year, and that's uh, delayed now. What, I can't even yep. think of the name of. No, yeah, but, but at check, the time, it was the greatest thing ever. Yeah, so, check this. Check this real quick. Uh, just, just, for, just for to get the idea. I'm watching this shit with Tyler, right? And we're watching the IGN feed. And I don't really say much when I'm watching this because I don't really watch this stuff because I know what's going to happen. 
And I'm sitting there, and I'm I'm watching the Microsoft thing. I'm like, oh, well, hey, hey, well, they actually, yeah, that's pretty damn good. That's solid, you know. And then the, and then the, then the PS4 stuff, PlayStation stuff happens, you know. And it's like coming in 2019, and the whole place goes nuts. Tyler's right. They start crying and sobbing and jumping up and down like the Beatles just played yes. and everything like that. Yes. And I'm like, oh, bullshit. And then they cut back to after the after the PlayStation's done. And I'm sitting there with my hand, with my with my head in my hand, sort of just watching this. And the announcers on IGN start start just going off about how PlayStation owned it. And all you see is my left eyebrow start to raise and raise and raise <laughs> and raise to the point where it almost goes into my hairline, you know, because I cannot believe what I am hearing because Microsoft had a super solid thing and all all the PlayStation did was. Now is what they're going to do in the next fourteen years, you know. So I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't so, even pay attention to who wins anymore. I'm just like, yeah. So does it. does Microsoft yeah. need to kill it? Um, by IGN standards, yeah, they need to announce like that. You know, they <laughs> they purchased Nintendo and brought it exclusively to Xbox, <laughs> um, yeah. and even then, some will still probably win. Yeah. But but I think I, I don't know. I don't get too bought up in the quarter of public opinion. Um, Microsoft just needs to keep doing what they're doing. And it's not that I hate Sony. I don't. I like the PlayStation 4. And and I like the games they're bringing. I would just love to know when they're actually going to be here. Yeah. Um, but it, it, as far as the other part of the question is Scorpio. Has Scorpio sold me? Absolutely. Um, Scorpio is a day one buy for me. And, and yeah. they've, they've put out that. I mean, I have a 4K TV with HDR. It's tailor-made for, for what I have. And, uh, and and the more we see, the more it's going to benefit people that don't have that set up. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, this is, I don't think they're kidding around when they say this is the most powerful console ever made. And, and it's going to be the best piece of machinery for console gaming that we've ever seen. So I'm, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm going to pre-order it as soon as it's available. Next question. All right. <laughs> so welcome to the PlayStation Hate podcast this is not the playstation hate podcast oh, we're just calling them out on what they do Listen, i own a ps4 what they do. i don't hate <laughs> I, own a, I, I own i own a ps4 oh, and a ps4 off. pro semi-pro you see. moving on i, I didn't know you all right it. ryan yes. schneider ask and i'll, I'll we kind of like briefly you. answered it uh, earlier uh, does Nintendo artificially keep? Uh, does Nintendo artificially keeping supply low to keep the hype around their hardware releases warrant legal action or a, a violent boycott? Um, I don't think so, because I think they can get away with it. Um, they've just been around for so long that uh, it, it's part of their business strategy nowadays. It, it's nothing new to us. Uh, it was the way ever, ever since the Wii. It seems like uh, there's yeah. just been supply issues uh, with their hardware. Um, I, I really do think there's there's right. a business strategy behind uh, the NES Classic. I really uh, do think with the Switch that the, the Switch sold. I mean, they announced that it sold over a million consoles uh, in its first month. So um, I, I don't think they were ready for that. Um, but does it warrant legal action? I, I don't think legal action is possible uh, yeah. in, in that aspect. Uh, I mean, it's their business. They don't have to. Um, submit to customer demand it just hurts their business overall um, it, it's hurting their bottom line is what it comes down to uh, they could have easily shipped 2 million units and sold 2 million units I, I, I'm almost fairly certain of it uh, <clears throat> mm-hmm. but but yeah uh, N- Nintendo I, I think that people expect it from them I mean we have the same issues with Amiibo we have the NES Mini issue the Switch issues no, no issues with Wii U though uh, and there were some issues. There yeah. were some issues with the 3DS over last holiday season. I remember they were just sold out. You could not buy a uh, 3DS or a 2DS last holiday season. So um, it, they're really only har- harming themselves. Um, they're harming their fan base a little bit, but they also have a hardcore, dedicated fan base uh, behind them. Me included. I know Graham included. Uh, mm. That would that will support them. So very tolerable. Can, can, can we sue them? No. Uh, are they breaking any laws? I, I really don't think so because I don't think there's a, a law making manufacturers that they you have to meet demand. I, that that's unrealistic. No, and so. Yeah. Let me for sure. let me jump in real quick. The, yeah, the, you, there's no legal action warranted or you know necessary or even available because they can make however many they want to. And 
whether that meets demand or exceeds demand or whatever is you know up to customer demand i guess but but they they you know we see all the time like special like figures made for games and stuff like that that are limited edition and could they sell 20,000 i'm sure but they make like 500 for a reason and Mm -hmm. And whether there's a business strategy behind it or not, um, they can make however many they want to. And if you want to boycott them, the only way to send them a message is to stop buying their crap. Yep. But nobody's going to do that because this SNES man, he's going to come out this year and everybody's going to be waiting in line. I'll be yes, I will. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this time you will. All they're going to be, all, <laughs> all that's going to happen to them is they're going to be rewarded for what they do. So... It's not going to change until people vote with their wallet. Bottom line. So, yeah. who wants to go next? Go ahead, Mike. No, I, Tyler, Tyler just got done saying everything I would say. So, I'm actually going to pass on this one because I agree with him. Yeah, I don't have much to say on this one. I would say the thing that would be most effective, like what Tyler said, is boycott. Will it happen? Very, 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 very doubtful. Uh, legal action. I'm pretty sure they have no. Nobody has any grounds. It's their product. They can make as money as they want. They can piss people off like they are doing. And I'm just really hoping that this is a learning experience, and they make enough SNESs that whoever wants them can get them. And who cares if they're still on the shelf three years down the road and people decide I'm going to get one. I'm sure it's not costing you that much. Maybe the licensing, I don't know if it's just a limited time or whatever. But come on, you guys have the money. Don't piss off your fans. Make enough of them. And that's all yeah. I got to say. There is actually one thing I want to say. One thing I want to say. Is we're in the day and age now where where people are buying and selling commodities on eBay. And so there are people that walk into joints, and I'm sure that both of you gentlemen who work where you work have dealt, and I know Tyler has, have dealt with people that walk in and buy 10 when there's, you know, little Jimmy Jimmy Thorne back there, you know, in his crutches who wants to get one. But no, that fucking guy's got to take 10 of them, you know, and goes and sells them on eBay. So what you need to do, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I believe that, you know, the people who sit there in the marketing department or the people who sit there and have to figure out the numbers on what to put out there have to take into consideration these people at this day and age and take this 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 profit, this power out of their hands and make yes. the extra ones. I agree you know? 100%. So, so you yep. know, Jimmy Thorne in the back there can, can get his, can go walk into uh, Target when his mom says, you know what? I had a great day at work today. I got a bonus kit. I'm going to take you and get you what you want instead of him having you know, go, Mom, there's no here. There's none here. Well, yeah. let's check eBay. $300. You're, no, you're yeah. right. Yeah. And I'll tell you that when the Wii U came out, I was working overnight actually that night. Yep. And yeah, you know, I was I was the, the co-manager that I saw so was in charge. And the um, this guy was there. We, we got six of them. And this guy mm-hmm. wanted all six. He was first in line. He was there at like 8 p.m. Yeah. He wanted all six, and I told him absolutely not. And he got mad at me. He like, got in my face, and I was like, "No, you can have one. And if there's any left after all the people that are here in line want to get one, then you can have whatever's left." Yeah. But unfortunately, that's not the way most people go. Like with the NES Classic Mini, um, the the uh, store across town nearest to me um, got fifteen of them and sold them all to one guy. Where do you think they're going? Yeah. yeah. That- that should not be allowed. If you're going to boycott yeah. anyone, stop paying scalpers what they're asking. Just I know, stop it. People, I really wish. Want it, Nintendo though, right? can avoid this thing. by actually it's making a crappy the, spot. Uh, you know, yeah. the, the product available. It's yeah. not so, that fucking hard. Yeah, it, it, nothing can. Yeah, and there's no legal action against them because they're they're not making no, any. There's profit. no legal action whatsoever. Yeah. Zero. If they're profiting off of this demand, and let's say the next week. Uh, after demand skyrocketed, they they changed the price to five hundred. Then yeah, yeah. there probably yes. would be some sort of legal action, but they're not they're not making any profit off of it. They're just they're just losing their fan base and making consumers mad. Is what yeah. it comes the only, down. The only way that there would be any legal um, recourse on this was if they were doing this to um, manipulate the market, which the FTC would take care of, yeah. and you know, that would be and, and if it was on a federal level yeah. and. So that's not happening. If it was false so, advertising too, saying we're going to produce so many of these, like give an exact amount, 
to keep to keep you know to meet demand, and then they produce half of that. Yeah. Um, there might be some action there because the only way you could get one is to pay double the price. Yeah, right? I mean, if and, they're purposely manipulating um, their stocks and market value and stuff yes. like that, then they'll, then they'll be investigated. But uh, yeah. outside of that, no. If they're really if they're going to keep doing this dumb shit where they don't get enough out for people for the demand, then it's their own fault and they lose money. So that's just that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure you could come up with some I mean, kind of class action lawsuit that takes four years. You know, when you get a free blockbuster rental out of it when you're done. I mean, yeah. you know, that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's the it's Nintendo that these, like, scalper, the eBay people, take advantage of the most. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I don't agree with that. Because they, they know the model. The consumer. No, yeah. I know, but I mean, like, like the in terms of which console they do it with, it's Nintendo oh, yeah. all the time. Because, because they, they, they know Nintendo short supply. They did You're that right. shit with the 360. I, my, my girlfriend at the time paid six, almost six hundred dollars for the 360 to make sure I had it on. That, excuse me, on that Christmas. You know, yeah. I felt terrible, and I was actually a little bit upset with her. But I'm not going to say I'm like, hey, I'm upset with you because you, you paid this. You know, oh, she had some nice dinners and we went on a little vacation and stuff like that. But right. you know, it, it's the fact that they do it with anything that they can because they sure. want to make an extra buck. So, but I'm saying over time, take, take it's the, the Nintendo Take the console. power out of their hands. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. I was one of those dumbasses that paid probably $100 extra for the Wii U. You are a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time I ever bought one like that. Don't yeah. ever call my Grammy a dumbass. He's he's a fine young man. <laughs> and I'm an ally of Canada. Hopefully they will protect us from Russia when the time comes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, from writing your so I, I, I will I will end I will end the note of this question that I, I sold my I so I bought two switches at launch. Uh, I've got I got the neon one and then I got the gray one. Uh, I sold the second one uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, through Facebook and I sold it at retail value for what I paid for it. I pay I, I sold it for three hundred dollars. Um, I to commend you, good sir. Yeah, and, and hey, I was really happy. Over there, buddy. Yeah, so I, I sold it for three hundred dollars to a guy. He actually drove one and a half hours to get to me. Uh, he was really excited. Like the second uh, I told him he could have it, he drove one and a half hours to me to get it. And he just actually sent a message uh, uh, right before the, we started this podcast saying, uh, "Thank you so much for selling me the Switch. Uh, I haven't been able to put it down." So it made me happy because I wanted to sell it to somebody that would actually. I didn't want to make a profit. I wanted to sell to somebody that actually uh, would get enjoyment out of it. So yeah, for sure. Your angel wings are awaiting you. At the and I, I was able to get my Xbox One S. I used the money to get an Xbox there you One. Go. Yeah. So, so worked out good. So last question. Uh, right in your name. Uh, new new write in from Mitchell Martin. New listener, new, first time writing in. He asked us, uh, "What's the dirt on the newest dirt game?" <laughs> he didn't ask. <laughs> that. That, that was my spin. That was my pun. So, I got this no. for you, Mitchell. Um, so the there's not, game. I got this for you, Mitchell. There's not a lot out there. I found the trailer. The trailer is just cinematic. It just shows a guy in the, getting in the car and driving through what it seems to be nighttime now. So they'll uh, they'll obviously have a nighttime mode in this game. Um, there, are, I have not seen any gameplay footage for it. But what I do know is is that it's going to be released on the PlayStation, Xbox One, and Windows PC on in June 2017. Uh, Codemasters has said that they they, uh, they have sought to combine the thrill and realism from last year's title with the fun races and play, players that have previously experienced in titles like Dirt 2 and Dirt 3. It's going to it's going to in, reintroduce fans to the franchise to white knuckle, truck and buggy racing in uh, um, Land Rush. So, you know, they, it, I, I enjoyed the hell out of one and two. Yeah. I wasn't exactly a big fan of three. So if Dirt Four takes the elements from one and two and, and you know applies them and you know makes it fun, then cool. You know I may actually buy that game. So for those of us that don't know, it's a rally racing game. Yeah, it is. Uh, and it's in the Colin McRae rally series. So yeah, cool. but he died, so they don't call it that anymore. Right. Right. Oh. Unfortunate. Okay. God rest. Well, I didn't. Soul. I didn't know. I didn't know Rip. that. This... Fun yes. Fact. Rest in peace. Oh. All right. Does that cover that? That pretty much does, my friend. On a sour note, but yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks, but, uh, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess I brought but, it up, so it's partially my fault. Yeah. Well, thank I you guys for all your yes. Thank you guys for all your questions, and uh, keep sending them in. 
And remember, every time you sign a question and it's read on the show, you're entered to win our monthly giveaway. So keep sending them in. You can do that via Facebook or email at uh, mail at thirdsongaming.com. So yep. with that, that's going to do Wait. it for episode. Yeah, Mike, go ahead. Don't stroke out at the, at the exit. Oh, okay. my God. Oh, boy. All right, that's going to do it for episode number 45. Here it comes. Oh, the Third Sun Gaming your Podcast. Eye. By the way, everybody, we're hoping that we'll have uh, a pretty cool big announcement in the next couple weeks for you guys, um, something that will help us uh, grow and get better. And uh, for those of you who have been loyal listeners, we uh, we really appreciate and thank you, and uh, we hope that this thing works out because uh, you deserve it as well. So with that... Thank you for listening. We'll be back next week with episode number 46 on continuing the countdown to one year doing this. Dun, so, dun, uh, dun. I know. We're almost E3, everybody. So we'll be back next week with number 46. Until then, everybody, Damn. stay safe, have fun, play some great games, and we'll see you next week. Go, Go gaming. Go.